Let's quickly go over the setup that we are about to create. It's just something simple and stylized, but it has some interesting concepts in it. Let's say I need to generate undefined number of wood planks and some of them would be destroyed. And of course I can use just a Warner fracture which I am using right now. But usual problem when you use Warner Fracture for procedural modeling is its internal faces. Usually you can rely on the interior and exterior groups, but unfortunately in our case, because we actually fracture this in this manner, and then we get rid of some of the chunks to have this interesting shape here. And the issue with this particular way, Boolean and VDB can give us some problems and this is can be extremely annoying to solve at some points. So let me just show you the behavior without solution and with solution. So yeah, without solution is painful to watch, but with our simple algorithm to destroy unwanted faces, we have correct geometry, adequate geometry, I would say. And inside of our geometry, we have only surface. We don't have any weird overlapping primitives. So unfortunately, there is no fast way of fixing this issue. If we go inside of our polys, we can try to use poly doctor, which can be a little bit slower. It may be just me who didn't manage to correctly set the parameters, but for example, I can go and pair overlaps and by default it gives me some kind of unpredictable mass which can bring even more problems when I start using this geometry. So in our case it's just a wood plank but actually it can be like a base shape for stone. It's pretty frequent to use Voronoi for generating the stone-like shapes but in that case we can rely on VDB we can, for example, add some small voxel size and we generally don't care about precision. But with wood-like shapes, I would like to keep the precision, keep sharp edges and at least to have a control to, for example, apply some kind of a bevel later. If I enable the wireframe, you see that in my case, topology is somewhat controllable. And if I decided to do something with additional noise or something like this, it would work kind of stable. And yeah, we will go through how to set up the tool that will give you kind of quick way of controlling the amount of your destruction, which is kind of simple and convenient. Have some simple additional controls that could be promoted to the interface of HDA, for example. So yeah, it's kind of convenient. And all of this is having the adequate geometry at least, which is great. So let's try to go over this particular setup. I will just try to duplicate it as it was before, maybe with some deviations or variation. But what's interesting about the approach is not only a useful thing, but it's also good reason to talk about the dictionary data type in VEX. Let me just copy my box and let's start over. First step would be to cheaply imitate the breaking of wood. Of course, in our case, it's just a stylized thing, so you can go as detailed as you want. In my case, I am go with stylized shape for this one. Let's start with adding transform node and let's actually pick just a touch our geometry, just a like really tiny amount, just to give additional points for Boolean. It would be easier for this tool to have some kind of a overlap of geometries. Let's scale it using Z axis and let's scale to something really small. We'll duplicate this transform Probably we will connect this, copy parameter and connect this one, paste relative references, and we will choose invert transformation. Now we got back to initial geometry that we had before. So we will use Voronoi structure, scale geometry, go here, 
and now we have would like blanks. So basically we reset the transformation back. There is, of course, more advanced ways of doing so, and we will go over this a little bit later in some of the following lessons, but for our case, this simple approach would work. So I will change the size, and you see the look of fractures is changing. Of course, 1000 points is too much for us. Let's add it to something less. I will decrease the relax iterations, just turn it off to have more organic looking Voronoi cells here. Then I will pack my chunks because Voronoi fracture generated name attribute for us. We can use it as a source for packing. Then we will use something pretty simple, but to illustrate this, probably I will add add node and delete geometry, but just keep the points. So this is like a pivot points of our chunks. And also let's add transform node, plug it into the second input. These two inputs have exactly the same amount of points. So we can rely on PTNum from first one to get values from second one. The reason why I'm about to reference this, I just want to control this geometry using this transform. It will adjust my mask easier. So let's create vector variable here and this vector variable would be pause and we will get point position from second input and the number of point would be current point. And then I will create new variable, let's call it mask. And this mask would be equal relative bounding box, which means that on each axis of this geometry, it will calculate value from zero to one, representing the bounding box of this object. So relative bounding box from first input, position would be pause, so it's a sampling position here. And we need only X value from this. And then we will delete any primitive that doesn't match some condition. And the condition would be like this. If mask less than channel, let's call it threshold, TRS in our case. If so, we will remove primitive and primitive would be removed from first input. Number of primitive would be pitinum or primnum. It's actually the same thing with pack geometry. So the last argument here is telling that we need to remove points also, not only prims. Let's create this parameter. Let's get rid of this add and let's see if it's working. Yeah, it's working, but not in the axis that I want it to work, but luckily it's easily fixable. So we can, for example, set it to 19. So we rotated these points and now we have control for each axis. So this is pretty cool that we can fine tune kind of a loaf for this. And if we want, we can, for example, also add some kind of point jitter or noise to add some additional variation here. We can scale it down quite a bit just to have some slight random values, but this is completely optional. You see there is a little difference. So now we have our system quote unquote intact and let's try to work with the geometry. So I will, I will unpack this and let's quickly go over theory behind this simple thing. Let's say we have some polygon. It doesn't matter the amount of points, but it's just easier for me to have four in this case. And it has some regular point numbers and everything would be fine. If not, evil doppelganger of this primitive, which is existing right in the place of our correct one. And this would be one and initial one would be zero. This is pretty unfortunate situation in some cases because Boolean node, for example, struggles with it a bit and a lot of other nodes also when you try to get some kind of adequate geometry. And unfortunately, this is exactly the result of Voronoi fracture node. For the most part, we cannot rely on the inside faces group, which is generated by Warren fracture because we will actually modify our geometry in some particular way. And at the end, we need to come up with some simple but analytical way of telling that these two polygons actually the same and this part should be removed, for example. So if we fuse these points, we will get only four points because like, remember, this is exactly the same position. But if we fuse it, we will still have this same two polygons, which now 
sharing one important property. They have exactly the same points as the vertices. So we will grab all the points from each primitive. And for example, each primitive can be constructed in a different way. And zero primitive would consist of, let's say, zero, one, two, three, just the regular ones. But second one after the fuse would consist of two, three, zero, one. We need to sort it for each of them. So they have some kind of ID which is just containing the point numbers for each primitive. And based on this number ID, we can tell that these two polys are actually the same. We will store this information in dictionary and we will use it as a key. So dictionary is just a mapping between some key and some value. So let's say we have this generated ID from point numbers as a string, so as a key, and as a value, we can store all the primitives that are sharing the same ID. In our simple case, it would be just a zero and one. And based on this, we will put zero and one both to some group. Let's say it will be called overlap. Let's implement that. First thing that we need to do is to fuse all primitives. So let's just add fuse node here. And now we have much less points and let's get rid of anything that inside of our geometry. So this particular faces. And to do so, we will need to create some attribute wrangle node, set it to detail. And it would be simple, but I can understand that dictionaries kind of hard to get your head around. And it's just uh, some pairs of values. You can get second value knowing the first one. This is literally the mapping between two or more values. In our case, first value would be string, kind of name, and second value would be array of primitives. To create dictionary variable, we use dict keyword, and let's create empty one for now. Point set, and it would be equal empty dictionary. This is the way to define empty dictionary in VEX. And then I will go over each primitive in my geometry. So for integer i, we start with zero in this case, or we can call it primitive. Let's call it prim, for example, just to be more explicit. And prim would be less than n primitives, i++, plus plus, as usual. So this is our loop that will go over each primitive in our geometry. Then we need to create array, which will contain all the points from current primitive. In our case, it's a prim variable here. Let's actually rename this to, for example, just a PR. Yeah, PR would be okay. And of course here I forgot to use PR because we have function primitive, which can be confusing. So let's create prim PTS array. This is just an integer array of integers here, and it would be equal function primitive points. So we get every point that belongs to this particular primitive, kind of a prim num, first geometry and number of primitive is current primitive, so PR. And then crucial thing, we need to sort our array because as I mentioned before, points can be the same, but order of points when we create polygon can be different. So we should address that. So prim points equal sorted version of itself. So sort prim points. Next, we need to initialize the name of our key. It would be string, and for now it would be empty. Next, we need to go over each element in prim PTS array. So we will use for each integer point. This is the element itself. And second argument here would be primitive points prim PTS array. And here we will just add value number of current point to ID name. So as I showed before, in the, simple, in the simplest form, it would be 0, 1, 2, 3, for example. Next, because it's a loop and this dictionary will be updated on each iteration, we also need to check if current value ID is already presented in this array. So we can use the following. If is valid index, this is the function that used for checking if this element in array or dictionary. Dictionary would be point set, point set. And the value which we're trying to find would be ID, this string, 
that we created here. So if it's there, we will create additional integer array. Let's call it existing prims, primitives that already have this ID. We need to get existing value from the dictionary. So we will call point set. This is our dictionary and we need to get value of the key ID. Hopefully it makes sense. So this is the way of getting value of certain key in our dictionary. We stored it and then we will append to newly created array. It would be existing prims. Let me just copy this one. And to this array, we will append our PR. So this value here, primitive number actually. And we will set back new value to key of our point set. So basically, this value here would be equal new existing prims array in which we appended our current primitive if this value is presented in our dictionary. Hopefully it makes sense. And also what we need to do, we need to go for each primitive in this array. Let's use, uh, let's call it prim, okay. We will go over each primitive in existing prims array. We will set primitive attribute and this primitive attribute, let's call it overlap. Primitive that we will set value to would be prim and here we will set it to one. And if this thing is not valid, let's create else here. If it's not valid, let's create new array. Let's call it new prims. And we simply will append current primitive. So PR in our case, like our outer loop Thing. We will set this key ID, so we don't have this ID key still, but we will create it and set it to new prims array like this. And we will set primitive attribute overlap to be zero because it's just first encounter. This is just the first time this primitive is spotted of this particular ID or point indices combination. And we can set overlap to zero in this case. So set primitive attribute, set prim attrib, first input, attribute would be overlap, number would be primitive, and value would be zero. So now we can close our loop. And just to see what we have generated, let's store this dictionary attribute on detail. So let's call it point set. To store dictionary attribute, you use just a D letter, which is cool and logical. And here we will add point set. And let's see what we have here, because we have some issues. We should open these curly braces here. Yep. And now it's working. Let's go to geometry spreadsheet. Let's go to detail and let's look at our dictionary that we have created. So you see, this is just a combination of point indices here, sorted point indices. And for example, here we can see that two polygons in this array, which means that we set overlap to one. And when it's only one, then we set overlap to zero. And this is like much faster than trying to go over each primitive over and over again. Although dictionaries themselves is not the fastest option, but we can reduce complexity of our algorithm and of our search drastically. So we can perform this separation even with complex geometry. So let's just blast everything that has attribute overlap on primitives equal one. And for now we don't see any changes, but if we delete non-selected, you can see that we selected exactly internal paces. And this is exactly what we need. And now this geometry, this cutter geometry is much, much cleaner because we no longer have to care about the handling of these intersections and tools won't get crazy because of that. So I will add fuse here, additional fuse, because we now only have surface and we don't want to deal with these weird intersections. I mean, this geometry, we don't want to spend computational resources to deal with that. That's why we kind of invert this. And this first box, we will add Boolean here and we'll just subtract this one from this one. And as you can see, Boolean didn't get crazy. Let's see what will happen if we remove these four things. And it's much worse. There is actually tricks when you can, for example, scale each piece. And this way you will give Boolean more stable geometry. You can definitely do this, but this one is a bit cleaner. And also you can use the same technique with different geometry 
It could be some kind of a rocks or something like this. So wherever you want to destroy. And let's just check the stability of the system. And you can see it's pretty, pretty stable, which will help us in our next lesson about suspension breach, which I was recording and came up with this particular solution that will simplify geometry creation a lot.